the weekly show with David J. Maloney. This week, David chats with renowned film and television star, Ruta Lee. And now, here's your host, David J. Maloney. Welcome, everyone, to The Weekly Show. I'm your host, David J. Maloney. On tonight's show, we've got a really special guest. She's one of the few people you'll ever meet who has more than one star on the various walks of fame in Hollywood. And, and she's rubbed shoulders with some of the biggest and brightest stars to have ever graced the screen, from Fred Astaire and Audrey Hepburn to Burt Reynolds to Frank Sinatra. Lucille Ball. There's no end to the story she's lived through in Hollywood. First, rising to fame with her role in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, and here to chat about her incredible life after the break is none other than legendary actress Ruta Lee. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Our featured guest tonight is someone whom we would consider Hollywood royalty. Uh, she's had more than one star on the Hollywood Walks of Fame, is a gem of the classic television and Western film genres, and has worked with some of the biggest stars to have ever graced the silver screen, from Fred Astaire and Audrey Hepburn to Burt Reynolds, Frank Sinatra, Lucille Ball. She's worked with them all and known them all. Uh, she first rose to fame with her breakout role in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Here to chat about her life career, her new book, and one woman show is none other than actress Ruta Lee. Ruta, welcome to the show. Wow, what a beautiful introduction. Would you mind doing um, my memorial service when the time comes? <laughs> uh, you just sign me up. I I'll, I'll give it my best. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, Ruta, you're truly one of the last gems we have left of a certain era of Hollywood. Um, it, it almost boggles the mind to think of all the things you've seen and the people you've known inside the film and television world. So I was wondering if we could actually start at the beginning and work our way kind of forward. Your family originally migrated uh, to, I think, Quebec and then L.A. What was right. life like growing up in those times with all those kind of changes happening around you? Um, it was a beautiful period. I, I mean, I lived in Montreal, Canada. Uh, my parents wanted to come into the United States, but the quotas were closed. Mm. And why the United States? Because everybody knew that the streets were paved with gold. But uh, Canada was very, very good to my parents. Of course, they were had a heavy, heavy work ethic being Lithuanian born. I think most Europeans had that heavy work ethic. And uh, so they saved their money and they they bought property. And, and uh, my father was a tailor. My mother was a seamstress. They worked very hard. But my mother always felt, and she took the advice of my kindergarten teacher, David, and who said, Mary, talking to my mother, give your child lessons, music lessons, dancing lessons, singing lessons, whatever, whatever kind of lessons you can afford to give her, because she's different from the rest of the kids in all of my kindergarten classes. And my mother took her advice and did exactly that. So it would take me to, to dance classes. And she thought that I was Lithuania's and her answer to Shirley Temple. She didn't know anything about theater, David, which would have been the logical step from New York to, to, to Montreal was what, 300 miles. But um, she saw movies and she thought, my little girl can do what that pretty little girl does. So Hollywood was set in her brain somehow. And when my father said, let's get out of this cold, cold climate and snow up to our noses every year and move to someplace warm, he was thinking of Hollywood, but he was thinking Hollywood, Florida, not Hollywood, California. But my mother had it in her mind. And when we got a visa and came to California, it was like moving into heaven. California and especially Los Angeles and Hollywood was colorful and green and beautiful. And uh, it, it was a little bit of heaven. Southern California is still a little bit of heaven, but it has too many people now. Too many of you Easterners have come to our way. Of course, Florida is still as beautiful as ever, but uh, I suppose Floridians are thinking we've got too many Northerners as well. Oh yeah, uh, without a doubt. Um, so, so they originally chose LA and have you ever thought of like, well, wow, I mean, let's say they did choose New York. 
how different, like, I mean, that butterfly effect, right? Wow. It would have been different, but I think I would have found a way into show business because I think I was born with the gene that said you have to perform because I had been performing from the time I could walk. And uh, my mother put me on stage at, in the church uh, festival events, you know, and uh, whatever. And then I got to be kind of a little bit famous with the Lithuanian communities in Boston and in New York. And, and sometimes I would be invited to come and perform. So I've never known anything but that. And you have to understand, David, my mother was the furthest thing from a showbiz mom. She wasn't pushy. She didn't, she was pushy in that she gave me lessons and said, try, go do it, try, try. That's all she ever did. But she had this very heavy Lithuanian accent and she was the furthest thing from what we think of as a showbiz mom. So the fact that it happened was truly a blessing and I thank her and I thank my father for paying for the lessons uh, because everything took more than one hand. You know, you, you, you might have the hand of God on your shoulder saying, go for it, kid, but it helps if your mom and your dad help you along the way too. Uh, growing up in LA, what was your first memory of meeting someone famous? I mean, did you ever pass you know, a celebrity at that time in the street or at a store when, you know, when you were, you know, back in the day before you got into business? Well, you know, before I got in the business, you have to remember that I grew up in Montreal, Canada, my formative years, and you could not go to the movies until you were 16 years old. Wow. I did not know that. Which meant that I didn't see any of those fabulous 30s and 40s and into the 50s films, you know, the 50s I did get to see because I was already here. But I I didn't really know who anybody was other than I read fan magazines and stuff. And so I was madly in love with Alan Ladd, you know, and, and I, I wrote letters and got a picture back. Uh, you know, from a fan picture from Alan Ladd. I, he was the only star I really knew. But I guess the first great stars that I ever really met and worked with were Gracie Allen and George Burns, Burns and Allen. And for all of your viewers who are probably too young to know who Burns and Allen were, they were very big television stars that had grown up in vaudeville and then did movies and were big radio people. And above all, they had the hottest show in television. And, and, and I got to work with them and not only once, but twice. And the nice part, David, was that, I mean, I was still what, 16 at the time, I think, that I would get invited to some of their cocktail parties that they had where their Beverly Hills house with the big, beautiful backyard and the pool and lots of stars there. And, and of course I tried not to gulp uh, and, and swallow hard, but they, they invited me even though I was a youngster to join them. And I thought that was a great compliment. And Mr. Burns used to, when I was heading up the Thalians, used to come to my events all the time and, and pay the ticket to come. I, I just was so impressed with that and the fact that they honored me by allowing me to join their beautiful festival events. Now, the film that really launched you into our hearts and onto our screens was the Western musical Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in the most serendipitous of ways, your Lithuanian heritage might have helped you snag that job. Uh, how did that role come about for you? I went to the uh, casting office at MGM. And I mean, this was like entering, you know, the, the hallowed walls. What can I tell you? It was like a cathedral. And speaking of cathedrals, while I went in for the audition and you had to be able to dance, uh, my mother went and got down on her knees in the church across the street from the casting office and lit many candles and prayed. And I'm never sure whether it was my mother's prayers or my 
Lithuanian polka ability that got me the job because I went in and I put on my little tights and whatnot and went into audition for Michael Kidd, who was the choreographer, and uh, of course, Stanley Donan, the director. And the piano player did a little ballet music and I balleted and hopped around and did a few things. And then they did a little jazz kind of thing, you know. And then they said, can you do something folksy? Well, hell, I knew how to do a Lithuanian polka. And so I polkaed up a storm and thank God I got the job. And like I said, I don't know if it was mom's prayers or my polka or the combination of which, but thank you, Lord. I got the most wonderful experience of my life. It was my first movie and certainly my first experience of working with some of the best dancers in America. And David, I used to go to the bar every morning, you know, the B-A-R-R-E, the ballet class, every morning that we did a warm up. And I would watch some of these dancers that were truly the best in America. And I'd say, what in hell am I doing here? How did I get so lucky? But oh, whatever went wrong, a lot of stuff went right. And those days, we worked six days a week. We had, didn't have, this was the early 50s, 53, 54. Uh, we didn't have the, uh, the long weekends that we now have. But uh, just going to work was a pleasure to laugh and scratch and carry on. And Michael Kidd was, I think, one of the greatest people God put on this earth. Not only was he a marvelous talent and a great choreographer, but he also had the wildest self-deprecating sense of humor. Uh, he, he would say, instead of three chassés and a PK turn to the right, He'd say, give me three of those or six of those scrape alongs with the corkscrew at the end. That was Michael Kidd. Where were you when you were told you got the part? And what do you remember about that special moment in time? I don't remember where exactly I was, but I must have been at home. And the casting director must have called to say that, that I had gotten the part. And of course... I have to comment now while I have a chance on casting directors in that day really held great sway. They knew their work. They went to see young people that nobody had ever heard of in little theaters or whatever around or, or picked up on all the television stuff that they were doing. They knew their craft and a casting director would say to the director or the producer of the television show or the movie that was being shot, do you want a blonde or a brunette or a redhead? Because he knew that we would come with credentials and with talent. And nowadays, directors and producers will read people who have much better credits than those producers and directors ever dreamed of having themselves and have them in to read one line. It's, it's insane. I, I don't quite understand whether I'm getting the time, but that's the difference between the industry way back when, when I first came into it. And thank God I came at the tail end of the real golden years and I got to experience them. What do you remember about the first time you met uh, directly Stanley Donen? Because he had just come off doing Singing in the Rain, as I recall. I mean, what 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 stood out to you about him? Well, you were scared to death of anybody that was a director or producer. They were tantamount to God's right hand, you know. And and so I just remember being very respectful. But frankly, I wasn't concentrating on, oh, this is Stanley Donan or this is Michael Kidd. I don't think I realized how wonderful Michael Kidd was until during and after when I went to New York and saw Stanley Donan's work on film or uh, Michael Kidd's on stage. Uh, so I, I did a lot of growing up in that period, let's face it. What was the uh, the hardest scene to shoot in, in that film for you? The hardest? I, all of it was hard, but all of it was just so wonderful. The The escape or not the escape but the capture of the girls 
we did not go on location to Utah where they shot the snow scenes of the, the, the carts and the wagons going through the passes. That was all done beautifully on film. And we shot the collapse of the, the snow and the snow coming down in the canyon that would shut us off from the townspeople over Esther Williams swimming pool. That's show business. Yeah. The the wagon with all of us screaming and yelling and kicking our heels and carrying on and the boys holding us down. And and you know, everybody was supposed to go through quietly so that the snow wouldn't come down. Well, it came down over Esther's swimming pool. Now that's Hollywood magic for you. That is. Um how soon in the process of shooting did anyone kind of get an inkling that this might be a real sleeper hit for all of you in the studio? I don't think they realized it until the film got put together, or at least pieces of it were being seen. Because they came to us at the end of the, the shoot and said, we're going to send all of you girls out to different parts of the country to publicize this picture and get it known because nobody had ever heard anything about it. All this was, this the, was the press tour. Right. Yeah, uh, I remember you the, saying that the, that uh, somewhere in the, that the press tour for you was like a whirlwind or something like that. Oh, it was. It was because I had from the Great Divide, uh, you know, Denver West to the coast, all of the, the major cities. And then they gave me all of Canada to do as well. But the nice part, David, was that when the press people came to me and said, we're going to give you this portion and then it's going so well, we're going to send you across Canada. They said, you, you can never become a movie star with a name like Ruta Kilmonis, which was my real name. Of course, these were the days before they worried about Gina Lola Brigida or anybody. And I said, oh, OK. So we kicked around a lot of names and nothing really struck me. And I said, no, I want to keep the Ruta because it's a traditional, beautifully beloved Lithuanian name. And I, I, I want to keep that name. And they said, OK, but we have to kick around names to go with it. Nothing worked. And then what, one day somebody said, what about Ruta Lee? And I said, oh, that works because the diminutive of Ruta in Lithuanian and Polish and Yiddish and German and Russian or anything is Rutele, Rutele, Rutele. Hey, Ruta Lee, that works. So that's when and where I became Ruta Lee. And amazingly enough, the man that did the titles on the movie screening obviously didn't get the message that my name had been changed. And it came out Ruta Kilmonis. <laughs> and you know all those people in Ames, Iowa or, or Verdun, Canada were saying, who the hell was that girl that was here saying that her name was Ruta Lee that said she was in the movie? But uh, it was a beautiful experience, and boy, did I learn a lot. Uh, what was it like seeing the film with an audience for the first time, and, and where were you? I mean, what do you remember about that experience? The first time was in Houston, Texas, when we all went down for the the Texas opening. And it was so exciting. Uh, of course, we didn't have jets then, you know, in 54, 55. So we went down on prop planes. And, and of course, it was very thrilling. And then the major premiere was right here in Hollywood at Grauman's, uh, not at Grauman's Chinese, it was at Grauman's Egyptian Theater. And so exciting. To, to be there. Uh, of course, it was a big shock to discover that my name wasn't Ruta Lee, but Ruta Kelbotis on the credits. But uh, hey, stuff happens. What can, what can you say? But uh, a, a very exciting experience to do the red carpet for the first time and be part of a film that was so important. And, and what fun, because when you stop and think that all of MGM's big money was going into... Um, Oh, what's the name of the, the wonderful movie about Scotland and the disappearing village? Brigadoon. Oh, yeah. Brigadoon. Hmm. Got all the money and, of course, big stars. You know, Gene Kelly and Sid Charisse. 
and and uh, Van Johnson, and uh, our stars were of course Dean. Uh, uh, what am I saying? Dean. Dean Martin has been on my mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Wonderful Mister uh, uh, Jesus. Can't think of his name. Jane Powell and Howard Keel. I'm getting old. I can't remember names at all anymore. Well, it seems like your memory is pretty good so far. So your 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 director Stanley Donan would go on to cast you once again in the Audrey yes. Hepburn film Funny Face. How yes. did your casting for that uh, movie come about? And did your work, your previous work with Stanley help kind of land that gig? I would imagine. I, I don't remember auditioning for it. I think I got a call once again from the casting director saying, um, you've been cast in uh, a movie. And I said, oh, fine. And he had, I think he had one or two of the other brides in it as well. Uh, oh, maybe just one, but uh, we we it was fabulous because Gene Loring did all the the choreography, and I used to go to his classes he had at the uh, American Dance School. Uh, so it was fun to to dance again and to be part of this cast. And of course, I fell madly in love with Fred Astaire, and thank God he loved me too. We became very dear friends and he would follow my career and send me little notes every once in a while saying, I thought you were marvelous in this and this. Don't, don't play this kind of character quite as heavy the next time. He sent beautiful little notes. And did I keep them? Of course not, because I thought, oh, this is just part of life and I'll get them every day. And of course I didn't keep all of them, which I regret, but I became very good friends with his daughter and son-in-law as well. And his daughter-in-law is living in Palm Springs now. And she sent part of her family to see me in my show uh, that I did in Palm Springs just a couple of weeks ago. So we're still kind of tied together, which is very nice. Oh, nice to see. That's our show for tonight. Thank you so much for watching and a special thanks to actress Ruta Lee for joining us. Ruta will be back again next week for the next part of our interview. So please tune back in. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.